welcome to you all friends today let us discuss on surveying knowing about the relative position of various objects determination of distances between them measurement of angles measurement of height determination of boundaries and relative heights of various points come under the purview of surveying it is very essential to mark the various points on the land boundary lines of the proposed construction sites and levels that are heights of the various locations before starting the construction of building bridge embankment railway line etc after performing the measurements of the shape size and location of objects on ground the details are plotted on drawing sheet after the completion of drawing which may be one or more than one describing the details the construction process is started after determining the details of the soil strata below ground and bearing capacity of soil which is called geotechnical survey the depth of earthwork is decided by the engineer all these things are interrelated and forms the part of the total survey network at first sight the job of survey looks very simple but it actually requires special knowledge about it and the understanding of the job the students who have studied or who have the knowledge of mathematics and physics can acquire the knowledge about survey in a nice manner the pace of development which is going on in india and throughout the world has increased the importance of survey related works now how to make the measurement especially the length appropriate measuring tape that is fiber steel etc or chain is used for this purpose the metallic end of the tape is also taken into account while measuring the length the distances are written on the tape in meters centimeters etc now let us see what are the types of surveying we can carry out the types of surveying which are extensively being conducted are many example contour surveys land survey city survey topographical survey route survey mine survey engineering survey satellite imagery based surveys geological survey construction surveys soil surveys etc now let us discuss about dumpy level and plain table surveying a dumpy level it is also called as builders auto level and which is an leveling instrument or automatic level is an optical instrument used to establish or check points in the same horizontal plane it is used in surveying and building to transfer measure or set horizontal levels the invention in 1832 english civil engineer william gravett devised the more transportable and easier to use dumpy level and how it can be operated the level instrument is set up on a tripod and depending on the type either roughly or accurately set to a leveled condition using foot screws that are called as leveling screws the operator looks through the eye piece of the telescope while an assistant holds a tape measure or graduated staff vertical at the point under measurement the instrument and staff are used to gather and transfer elevations during site surveys or building construction measurement generally starts from a benchmark with the known height determined by a previous survey or an arbitrary point with an assumed height the term dumpy level endures despite the evolution in design a dumpy level is an older style instrument that requires skilled use to set accurately the instrument requires to be set level that is spirit level in each quadrant to ensure it is accurate through a full 360 degree traverse 
some dumpy levels will have a bubble level ensuring an accurate level. A variation on the dumpy and one that was often used by surveyors where greater accuracy and error checking was required is a tilting level. This instrument allows the telescope to be effectively flipped through 180 degree without rotating the head. The telescope is hinged to one side of the instrument's axis. Flipping it involves lifting to the other side of the central axis thereby inverting the telescope. This action effectively cancels out any errors introduced by poor setup procedures or errors in the instrument's adjustment. As an example, the identical effect can be had with the standard builder's level by rotating it through 180 degree and comparing the difference between spirit level bubble positions. An automatic level, self leveling level or builder's auto level includes an internal compensator mechanism that is a swinging prism that when set close to level automatically removes any remaining variation from level. This reduces the need to set the instrument truly level as with a dumpy or tilting level. Self leveling instruments are the preferred instruments on building sites, construction and surveying due to ease of use and rapid setup time. A digital electronic level is also set level on a tripod and reads a barcoded staff using electronic laser methods. The height of the staff where the level beam crosses the staff is shown on a digital display. This type of level removes interpolation of graduation by a person thus removing a source of error and increasing accuracy. During night time, the dumpy level is used in conjunction with an auto cross laser for accurate scale readings. More modern types of dumpy levels are still used by builders and contractors, but have been largely superseded for survey work. Before the introduction of digital levels with electro optical staff readings in the 1990s, a more common type of level was the automatic level which is constructed in a manner similar to the dumpy level in that the telescope is rigidly fixed to the vertical axis of rotation. However, the difference between the two is that automatic levels feature an optical mechanical compensator suspended under gravity which automatically adjusts the line of collimation without the need of a level tube. A dumpy level is an instrument used to measure, transfer or set horizontal lines. It is an instrument that is often used in surveying buildings. A dumpy level is used to establish relative height, distance and bearings from different parts of a site. Using this instrument requires a certain amount of skill. Setting the instrument is important to make the dumpy level completely horizontal for it to work properly. Adjust the height of the tripod until it is eye level. Move the legs of the tripod so it is balanced and can hold the level properly. Once you are satisfied, secure the legs of the tripod by pressing it to the ground. Then attaching the instruments to the tripod. The level is a very sensitive instrument, so take special care when you handle it. Set the instrument on top of the tripod and at the center of the tripod is a large screw that you will use to screw in the instrument. On the side of the level is the bubble. Adjust the screws at the bottom of the level until the bubble is at the center of the marker. This is to ensure that the instrument is leveled. Then using the e-meter stuff, once the dumpy level is set, ask your assistant to stand a distance away while holding the e-meter stuff. Dumpy levels can be used for determining the height of a particular point, determining differences in height between points, 
drawing contours on a land providing data to calculate volumes of earthworks, setting out level surfaces for construction, setting out inclined surfaces for construction, then measuring height using dumpy level. The place of which height is to be measured is called station. Height is always measured with reference to sea level. Survey of India established benchmarks at several places. Ideally, the distance should be taken from the benchmark. If it is not available, then we can select point on the map whose distance from sea level is known as the reference. We can fix any suitable point as temporary benchmark and all heights can be measured from that point. We can fix any temporary benchmark, but if its MSL at temporary benchmark is not sure, then before starting the surveying, permanent benchmarks reading should be clear. The dumpy level is one of the most basic types of optical level instruments. It is used in surveying and building to find elevations which are known as levels. It can be used to set, measure or transfer horizontal levels. Some surveyors have replaced this older style of instrument with automatic levels, laser levels or other high tech optical level instruments. One common variation of the dumpy level is the tilting level which allows for less operator error. Surveying is used to find the height of buildings and earth topography. This information can be used to make maps, set boundaries and gather information for builders. Measurement generally starts from a benchmark point, the height of which is known from a previous survey. The surveyor may also use an arbitrary point and estimate its height. The main body of a dumpy level is a telescope that swivels to take 360 degrees of measurement. Magnification power can range from 20 to 30 times. Many have spirit levels. The same kind found in simple construction, straight edges built into the base so the operator can clearly see if the device is level. When the bubble stays in the exact center, no matter how the telescope is rotated, the device is level. Three leveling screws set over a foot plate allow the dumpy level to be minutely adjusted. Each quadrant of the level must be set in order to ensure an accurate reading no matter which direction the telescope is pointed. These levels are mounted on tripods to hold them at eye level and keep them stable during measurements. Finding elevation using a dumpy level takes at least two people, an operator and an assistant. The assistant holds a tape measure or marked stuff called a leveling rod vertical to the point being measured. Meanwhile, the surveyor looks through the eyepiece at the target and the leveling rod. The operator takes measurements by comparing the marks on the leveling rod to the landscape. Several measurements of the same area can be used to find elevation, distance and other qualities of the landscape. A tilting level is a type of dumpy level that allows for greater accuracy. Instead of being welded to the level, the telescope is hinged. This allows the eyepiece to be flipped 180 degrees without adjusting the head. As the level needs to be moved less, errors are less likely to occur. Now let us discuss about the plane table surveying. A plane table, it is also popularly called as plane table prior to 1830, which is a device used in surveying and related disciplines to provide a solid and level surface on which to make field drawings, charts and maps. The early use of the name plane table reflected its simplicity and plainness rather than its flatness. The plane table became a popular instrument for surveying. Its use was widely taught. Interestingly, there were those who considered it 
a substandard instrument compared to such devices as the theodolite since it was relatively easy to use. By allowing the use of graphical methods rather than mathematical calculations, it could be used by those with less education than other instruments. This shows a plane table with part of the surface of the table cut away to show the mounting on the tripod. The mount allows the table to be leveled. On the table, the alidade with the telescopic sight is seen. A plane table consists of a smooth table surface mounted on a sturdy base. The connection between the table top and the base permits one to level the table precisely using bubble levels in a horizontal plane. The base, a tripod is designed to support the table over a specific point on land. By adjusting the length of the legs, one can bring the table level regardless of the roughness of the terrain. The three point problem, the method is based on the fact that in a correctly oriented plane table, resectors through well defined points get intersected at a point which represents the location of the plane table station on the drawing. For example, if x, y and z are well defined objects present in the field whose plotted positions are small x, y and z. Now, if the plane table is oriented correctly, the three resectors that are x, x, y, y and z, z get intersected at p which represents the location of the plane table station p on the drawing sheet. Thus, through solution of three point problem, both orientation and resection of plane table gets accomplished simultaneously. There are several methods for solution of the three point problem, trial and error method, mechanical method, graphical method, analytical method and geometrical construction method. Of these, the trial and error method is easy, quick and accurate. It is commonly used in practice and hence has been discussed in detail. Uses of a plane table. In use, a plane table is set over a point and brought to precise horizontal level. A drawing sheet is attached to the surface and an alidade is used to cite objects of interest. The alidade in modern examples of the instrument, a rule with a telescopic sight can then be used to construct a line on the drawing that is in the direction of the object of interest. By using the alidade as a surveying level, information on the topography of the site can be directly recorded on the drawing as elevations. Distances to the objects can be measured directly or by the use of stadia marks on the telescope of the alidade. Plane table surveying is a graphical method of surveying in which field work and plotting are done simultaneously in the field. The plane table consists of the following drawing board mounted on a tripod. The board is made up of well seasoned wood and varies in size from 40 centimeter by 30 centimeter to 75 centimeter by 60 centimeter or 50 to 60 centimeter square. Straight edge called an alidade. The alidade consists of metal or box wood, straight edge or ruler about 50 centimeter long. The beveled edge of the alidade is called the fiduciary edge. Accessories to the plane table are trough compass, then U frame or plumbing fork, spirit level or level tube, drawing sheet, then pencil or eraser. Now see, the compass is used to mark the direction of the meridian on the paper. U frame or plumbing fork, that is U frame with a plumb bob used for centering the table. Spirit level or tube, that is a level tube is used to level the plane table. Then drawing sheets are fixed on the top of the drawing board. Then pencil and eraser are used for constructing lines and eraser is used for erasing the lines after completion of the plan. Then setting up the plane table. 
the setting up the plane table includes the following three operations they are centering the plane table leveling the plane table then orientation of the plane table centering of the plane table should be set up at a convenient height for working say about 1 meter the legs of tripod should be read well apart and firmly fixed into the ground the table should be approximately leveled by tripod legs and judging by the eye then the operation of centering is carried out by means of u frame and a plumb bob the plane table is exactly placed over the ground station by u frame and plumb bob then leveling the plane table the process of leveling is carried out with the help of level tube the bubble of level tube is brought to center in two directions which are right angles to each other this is achieved by moving legs then orienting the table the process of keeping the plane table always parallel to the position which is occupied at the first station is known as orientation when the plane table is oriented the lines on the board are parallel to the lines on the ground advantages of the plane table surveys are it is suitable for location of details as well as contouring for large scale maps directly in the field as surveying and plotting are done simultaneously in the field chances of getting omission of any detail get less the plotting details can immediately get compared with the actual objects present in the field thus errors as well as accuracy of the plot can be ascertained as the work progresses in the field contours and specific features can be represented and checked conveniently as the whole area is in view at the time of plotting only relevant details are located because the map is drawn as the survey progresses irrelevant details get omitted in the field itself the plane table survey is generally more rapid and less costly than most other types of survey as the instruments used are simple not much skill for operation of instruments is required this method of survey requires no field book i hope you found this lecture very useful thank you